Gerard is the feisty, loud, just, you know, he's in there when he gets excited. He starts, you know, gets really animated. I love that. And, and, and uh, Chris is just more the reserved and kind of like chimes in. But when, when, I, when I sat with them, they were basically just, you know, giving me their vision about, um, you know, trying to make a, a statement in, in today's society. And, you know, because they got their finger on the pulse of uh, what's happening right now, you know, in the country they just really felt that this project was something that was needed and you know and because they're addressing things that are currently happening it's right on the money i play the character eli uh slash tyrosai um he is uh you know we when we first meet him we find him um, uh, on the plantation um, because we're playing with the, you know, um, the illusion of time. We don't know how long he's been around, you know. Is it a couple of months? Is it a couple of years? But uh, when he meets Veronica, he understands that, you know, she's a, she's a notable figure, figure in terms of, uh, you know, the, adva the advancements of, um, of black social consciousness and just black liberation. And, and I think when he sees Veronica, he sees a way out of this situation. And so he will do everything and anything he can to help her and help himself get out of a very, very dire situation. I think anytime there is a, um, there's a fight for justice until the thing that people are fighting for comes to pass. There's always going to be room for stories like this. I know people might say, oh, we've seen it all before. It's like, well, if we've seen it, then why are we still having these issues? If there are no issues, then there won't be any need for these kind of stories. But if you've got amnesia, then we need to consistently remind you and put it in front of you so that at some point we can come to a place where we can resolve our differences and move forward in the way that we have built this nation to be and how the rest of the world sees us. So I think it's absolutely important and necessary that we tell the story until we get or we see the change we want to see. I think just from the inception of just me being African and, you know, to understand the history of, of slavery and, you know, its origins and where, where, where it started and, you know, from the, the, the shores of West Africa and to find themselves here, you know, in, on these plantations. For me, it's kind of like full circle. Uh, in the reverse, like I am African, and I'm here in America, and uh, as Tongai, but as Eli, the character, I'm working on a plantation as a male who's been enslaved. And for me, just uh, being on a plantation, number one, is surreal, but it makes history that much richer. And the story of, you know, the forefathers that much more sacred. And you begin to appreciate the gravity of what transpired and who these men and women were, the conditions that they lived in what they had to endure, and yet through all of that still had some resolute hope that all was going to be well. I, I found that to be the last puzzle that I needed to complete my character. Now, what can I say? You know, she's a superstar. Uh, you know, if she's not that, she's one in the making, that's for sure. Um, I mean, it's been, it's been really great um, to see just 
how passionate she is about this project, uh, about the story. Um, and just, I think with everybody, to see uh, the emancipation um, of people of color, um, you know, particularly black, but also brown, but the mentality of, of liberation and to see us on equal footing with everybody else in the country. Um, it's been magic to behold and to see her zest and desire, you know, to be a part of a story, to be a cog in this massive wheel, uh, to say, hey, I've played my part. So, you know, I just love how she's been able to delve into this uh, fiercely, fierce, fierce, fearlessly, you know, um, and just uh, give us a, a, a sublime performance. I'm excited for them. Um, you know, them being first time directors, I think it's, it's, it's wonderful how they've been able to navigate because I think, number one, the enthusiasm has definitely permeated onto the entire set. Um, you know, <laughs> Gerard, you know, getting hyper excited while the, you know, the film is still rolling and it's like, <laughs> we haven't cut, you can't get too excited yet. You know, but to see that, you know, just, just gives us that uh, comfortability to know that, okay, you know what, we're on the right track. Um, and, you know, how, you know, Chris is, you know, very much hands-on, you know, like, you know, he's kind of like the technical guy. Chris is the hype man, you know. Um, but to see the way that they work, it's almost like they got that, they got one brain, uh, you know, but they know exactly what they want um, and they get that. Hey, it's Lisa here with more on horror. Now, Robert Englund was not the first choice to play Freddy Krueger. Wes Craven reportedly planned to have a stuntman play Freddy Krueger, but wisely opted to go with an accomplished actor for the role instead. His first choice was David Warner. However, Warner had to pass on the project, which opened the door for the truly excellent Robert Englund. Now, click here below to subscribe and also tap the bell to receive our videos in your feed.